I'm Alona Mikofsky, and you're watching HuffPost Live. Actor and producer Hayden Christensen amassed a huge fan base with his role as Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars prequels. But for his latest role, there's no Darth Vader suit in sight. Rather, he's leaping into a role that explores the ideas of faith, family, and the afterlife in the film 90 Minutes in Heaven. My name is Don Piper. 26 years ago, I died. When I woke up, I was in heaven. But God had other plans for me. Every day of my life, I ask the same question. Oh Lord, why'd you let me see heaven and take it away? Through his plan, I discovered my purpose is to tell you. God still answers prayers. God still performs miracles. Heaven is real. And Hayden Christensen joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to have you on HuffPost Live. Uh, so let's talk about the film here. So this is actually based on the true story of uh, Don Piper, who wrote a book about this. It was a bestseller, yeah. and now they decided to make it into, uh, put it into film form. What was it that really drew you to the project? Um, I was I was just affected by the story. Uh, I had heard of the book before, but but wasn't really familiar with Don's story until I'd read the script for the first time, and was just very moved by it. Um, you know, there's a uh, a lot of very powerful themes and a lot of good messages and. Um, and I thought it would it would uh, it would be an interesting character character to play. Uh, and then when I found out that they were going to be donating all the profits to charities, uh, then it just kind of seemed like a no-brainer, and I, I really wanted to be involved at that point. That's right. All the profits are going to charity. Any specific charities? Do you get a say? Uh, you know, no, or a but hand the, in the, taking the any of the ticket holders do apparently. So you can actually go online and, and choose which charity you want your money to be allocated to, which is a pretty neat thing. But just the, the, the notion that they're going to be giving all this money away is kind of unheard of, uh, yeah. especially in Hollywood. Of, of course, especially yeah. in Hollywood yeah. these days. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's a difficult film to watch in the sense that so much of it is really based on, on your character's recovery, mm -hmm. right? And what happens after the accident and kind of the, the, the way that he's tormented and, and very much struggling uh, with not only the physical aspects of, of what he went through, but also just his own psychological uh, kind of blocks, right, of, of, of coming back to earth after, after he was in heaven. How did, yeah. you, how did you try to put yourself in that place of, of showing that double misery? Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was an intimidating challenge. Um, you know, the characters laid out in a hospital bed for the majority of the film and uh, experiences such confinement and is, is very much sort of trapped in his own skin. Um, and that was, that was a, a challenge to figure out how to be creative uh, while just lying in one place because, you know, as an actor, you like to be on your feet and, and yeah. engaged. I think it's safe to say you didn't need a stunt double for this movie, I right? I did not need a stunt <laughs> double, no. No. Uh, but, you know, but did you draw upon any other on any personal experiences like that? Have you ever been in a bad accident? You know, had to spend a lot nothing, of time in the no, hospital? Nothing comparable to what, what Don went through. Um, you know, as an actor, you try to draw from your own experiences, but, uh, but I was playing a real person, and, and the real Don Piper was very involved in the project. Uh, so I got to spend a lot of time with him and uh, ask him a lot of questions and just try to sort of transpose his reality onto my own and I, I try to inhabit you know the character's world as much as possible so I I embraced all of the sort of discomforts and any sort of uh, pain that I could muster uh, you know there's um, there's a bunch of different scenes and, and you know acting physical pain is a, is a unique challenge it's much different than emotional pain like physical pain is a difficult thing to fake and if you're faking it usually the audience will, will smell it and um, and so I would try to cause myself pain in that, you know, the first time you see the character with that Lizarov device, the fixator, uh, I had uh, a rope wrapped around my leg trying to cut off the circulation. After mm -hmm. a couple minutes of that, you get this severe throbbing pain. And uh, so it was, you know, a bunch of different sort of tricks like that. Uh, to so try a little, little self-mutilation yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> as, yeah. as, uh, as method acting. And then, you know, what about, do, do you... What are your thoughts on the afterlife? You know, where, where, how did you approach the idea of, uh, of your character having been in or seen 
heaven. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, you know, what, what Don, the real Don Piper experienced is uh, pretty remarkable. And to hear him speak about it is uh, so compelling. Um, you know, he, he can describe it with such detail and vividness um, that it, 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 it inspired. Uh, you know, and, and I was interested in, in sort of the messages of, of, of faith and, and sort of the obvious curiosity about heaven, um, of course, but... But you weren't a believer, per se? Did you, did you believe in heaven before doing the film? Uh, or, or even now after the film, do you? Honestly, I don't really feel like my own personal beliefs uh, come into play, you know? I don't, I don't necessarily need to... It's, it's not about that, you know? And um, nor am I looking to sort of turn my own uh, beliefs into sound bites either. <laughs> uh, I was, I'm curious, you know, though, when you, when you sign up for a movie uh, I like was, this. I was very is, affected it's, by it the is story. A, it is a faith-based film. It is a Christian yeah. film. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a true story. It's a true story about uh, a person of great faith and religion uh, and what he experienced and, and what his whole family went through. Um, and that's what is really compelling to me, uh, you know, is sort of the human aspect of this story and... and and the, uh, you know, Kate Bosworth's character, uh, Eva Piper, who's really the hero of the story, um, you know, how she cared for Don and, and how she rallied this whole community of people together to care for this person and help this family through a very difficult time uh, was very moving to me and, and, and really spoke to me. Yeah, and Kate Bosworth's uh, husband directed yeah. The, the film, and yeah, she really, course. you know, is is absolutely stunning in it, but does play this very stoic wife who has to essentially carry so much of of the burden. And you know, it, one of the things that I thought was so interesting too in the film is that she, all the time that he was in the hospital, all those months, wouldn't sleep in their bed, yeah, uh, in yeah. their home, and she was sleeping on the couch because she didn't want to sleep in the bed without him. Yeah, it's very touching stuff, you know. Um, uh, and she does such a, an amazing job of playing the character. Uh, I, I really think she's just a phenomenally talented actress. And, and her husband, Michael Polish, is, is a, a, a real artist, you know. Um, I've been a fan of his work for a while, and he really, uh, I think, makes us look good in this movie. Uh, and, you know, we were saying, too, that you know, this is a true story, but do you think that there is more room for for faith-based cinema to have more mass appeal. I mean, you just look at right now, the, the film War Room yeah. is, uh, is doing very well yeah. at the box office. And I feel like that's not really something that we normally see a whole lot of. Yeah, well, I think it's a, it's a, a rising trend. I don't want to call it a trend, but uh, something that's becoming more popular in our culture. Um, you know, but uh, again, I, I, I don't really see it necessarily as just a faith-based film. I, I, I see this as a, as a, a film that has a much broader themes as well at play. Um, but, you know, it's a, I think it's a response to, to, to the idea that, you know, the public has an appetite for goodness. They want to, they you know, be told stories that are about positive messages, and, um, and I'm all for it. Yeah, well, I can tell you that part is definitely true. Somebody who works in the news, uh, you know, yeah. co constantly hearing the complaints that all we talk about are the negative things and then everything bad that's happening in the world. And a lot of the time it does seem to really... Uh, you know, outweigh how much we focus on on positive experiences like this. Yeah. Uh, now, Hayden, since we have you here, we're going to talk Star Wars a little bit too, yeah, sure. because of course the new Star Wars uh, films are coming out. Are you personally excited? Are you personally? Yeah, of course. Are you maybe in them? Could there be a little return? What What can you tell us? No, I'm not. I'm not in them, uh, but I'm excited for them. You know, I think like everybody else, uh, uh, I have high hopes and. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to see the movie as soon as it comes out. Uh, we have to, uh, or I'd love to include now, a member of our community at HuffPost Live. This is a fan of yours, and this is Nicole King, who wants to ask you a question. Oh. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi. <laughs> go, go ahead, Nicole. Oh, hi. Hi, hi Hayden. Hi. I, I just wanted to say hi. I actually got to meet you in L.A. at Extra TV a few weeks ago. Yes, and you yes, you look very familiar. <laughs> Um, my question to you is actually uh, pertaining to Star Wars because you did play such an iconic character and the movies will live on for generations to come. So what do you think was the most important and valuable thing that you took from being involved in that series? Um, 
Good question. I, I, you know, getting to be a part of a, a franchise that has had such a, a, a massive uh, effect on popular culture uh, was a crazy experience. You know, um, uh, you got you, you felt like a rock star while you were a part of those films, and uh, it was a very cool thing. Uh, and I, you know, I'm very honored and fortunate that I got to play the role that I did. You know, as an actor. Uh, I think, you know, you, 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 you try to do work that's going to live on and hopefully outlive yourself. And, uh, and with Star Wars, I, I, I know I get that. So, Are you ever surprised at how, how crazy the fans are? I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't mean crazy in a negative way, but just, you know, Star Wars fans are really yeah, they love rabid yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. absolutely love it, but they scrutinize every little thing that they don't like, and yeah. they're very vocal about it, and uh, they're intense. Uh, you know, the movies have had a, a, a crazy effect on people. Um, I think there was even a religion, a, a Jedi religion that was formed at one point, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, to be a part of that world for the, the, the couple of films that I was, uh, w was a unique experience. Um, and one that I'm very fortunate for and, uh, uh, you know, made some good friends and, uh, yeah, I got to play Darth Vader. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that's pretty cool uh, to have that on your resume. Got to play Darth Vader. Uh, all right, we've got another fan joining. This is Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello. Hey. Good, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Christensen. How's it going? It's going well. Um, my question for you is, uh, at what point did you know in your life that your calling was to be an actor? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I guess when I was in high school, I, I, I had sort of decided that acting was for me. I grew up playing sports and, and uh, you know, would have loved to have been a professional athlete as well, but uh, fell in love with the craft of acting in, in, in school. And uh, I, it was when I was doing a, uh, a production of Hamlet uh, that I just felt this great connection with, with the role and with the craft, and I thought this is for me. And uh, it's worked out for you, clearly. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think you've done pretty well for yourself. But you know what's interesting is these days, that comes with uh, celebrity comes with the territory a lot of the time, right? Which means a lot of people prying into your personal life and mm. things like that. And you, you're very private. Uh, you're not on Instagram. You're not on Twitter. Why don't you engage in that kind of online social media world at all? Uh. Laziness? I don't <laughs> <laughs> it does take work. Twitter actually is kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, it really no, takes a lot of dedication. I, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, but uh, maybe one day you'll see me on Instagram, possibly. I don't know. Maybe it's coming soon. Maybe. Well, your, your partner, Rachel Bilson, uh, is on Instagram, and she recently just posted, I gotta show it, because it's so adorable, this photo yeah. uh, of you in the park. What is, what is fatherhood like? It is wonderful. Um, Better than I could have ever imagined. Uh, you know, uh, our daughter is is just a, a bundle of joy, and um, it's an immense amount of work. You know, nothing that anyone can ever prepare you for, but uh, it's just it's the best thing ever. All right, I have to ask another question here. This one comes from Jamie McCarty, one of my colleagues here at Hub Post Live, and uh, if we're going back to the film for a minute, he wants to know how did you maintain that glorious mustache, <laughs> and please tell me it was real. It was absolutely 100% real. And uh, I worked very hard on that mustache. Uh, facial hair isn't really my thing. I'm, I, I don't grow it very well, so that was a good two months <laughs> of like commitment to... A little bit to, of, uh, what's, what's the stuff to called to kind of, uh, to help it grow? Yeah, there was a little bit of makeup, or, or to help it grow, nothing isn't like there, that. Isn't we there filled some it in with, some, with some makeup to make it look a little thicker, but the real Don Piper, had a, had a pretty hefty uh, mustache. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, wasn't necessarily my thing. It itched a lot and uh, <laughs> I was very happy to shave what, it off. What did, what did Rachel did. think of it? Was she, was she okay she with was it while it was there? She was very happy for me to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's the character, so. I think that's gotta be, that's gotta be some of the fun part, right? Absolutely. Dressing up, like, dressing Don, up and, like Darth Vader, growing a mustache, yeah, why not? All, it's all uh, make believe and a lot of fun. Um, and so, you know, where where else can we see you next? What what are you working on? Uh, well, uh, fatherhood is kind of my main project right now, but uh, um, I'm uh, going to be doing a 
Marco Polo, a film film version of Marco Polo, uh, to be directed by Rob Cohen, and uh, that's probably going to be next for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Right. Thanks so much. Been a pleasure. Yeah. And don't forget, the 90 Minutes in Heaven is in theaters on September 11th. And stick around. Much more coming up on HuffPost Live.